and then Welcome to this week's episode of Chasing the Whimsy. I'm your host, your host Ben, and I'm here with Megan. Hello, Megan. Episode thirty-eight. Long-awaited episode. Long-awaited thirty-eight. I don't know what those other episodes are doing, but this is the best one. This one's gonna be the best one. Uh, it is Super Bowl Sunday. William started wrestling club this week, so um, yeah, he was like, "No, no, I'm not gonna do it this week." So I was like, "All right, fair enough." Um, but coming off of the success of 37, um, we got Kelly over here in the back. We got the baby on the floor hanging out, playing blocks. And I uh, asked Megan to hang out with us because she listened to all the episodes. Mega Blocks, if you want to sponsor us, now right. is the time. <laughs> um, we are currently recording this on StreamYard. No one's going to see this video, but I'm going to tag it in the in the comments so that way they know that I'm like using them. Um, so, yes. 38. Um, if everybody's listening to this, I hope you all listen to the three part 37 from last Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, we had some, we had three guests. Megan, do you remember who the guests were? Uh, yes, the first one was Jay Sarge. I think he was my favorite. Sorry. <laughs> I know, I know, no, I know. <laughs> I, I think then the cons- Ming Chen and then Brian Johnson. I think the consensus is that Jay Sarge was the breakout of 37. He was so like genuine and nice and knowledgeable. And I don't know, he had a great energy. It was uh I think and what's what's interesting about the well, and we're gonna kind of deep dive a little bit into each one, but um Jay Sarge has gotten probably the most like reception of all the other ones. They're like, oh, Ming Chen, yeah, right. Brian Johnson, sure, he was he was good. No, they they were both phenomenal too. Like, I'm right? not gonna say they were bad. It's but if there had to be one standout, it yeah. wouldn't be Jay. Sarge. And there's the Jay Sarge, the the it's mythos of the story with yeah. Liam from episode like <laughs> two. <laughs> um, so the origin of 37. Sometime in like August, September, when I got the Instagram created. So I asked Liam early on, like, hey, can you be the social media guy and create some, just create the profiles and everything. So he creates the profile. And then I started getting into the social media stuff. And I was like, "Um, all right, I'm going to start, I'm going to learn how to start posting stuff. And then. I'm trying to log in and I was like, what is the password? He's like, I don't know what the password is. So I'm like, all right. And he sent me the screenshot of, of the Instagram page and he spelt it whimsy with an E Y. <laughs> so I was like, that's not, I'm like, that's not how we spell. I'm like, that's not how we spell whimsy, man. So, so I went ahead and created a new one. And then in the car, I was like, Liam, I'm like, it's fine. Cause we didn't have, we didn't have any followers really at that point. Right. We had a couple, we had a handful. We like, I can easily text hey, them. By the way, it's over here. Right. Yeah. But as we were looking through the friends, the the followers list, we had a Ming Chen following the EY. So I was like, I'm like, I'm like, Liam, we need Ming on the the, the, the Y. Yeah, you, you tell Ming Chen that you got right? the wrong one. So tell them those are posers, and we don't know who they were. So in the car, Liam goes in and changes, chasing the Z with the EY. He changes the name. Um, to the, the funniest thing I've ever seen in my life. I don't even have my phone. It's it said something like chasing the whimsy w- without like I think it's the, the the name is moved to chasing the whimsy without the e. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, all right, cool. Yeah, you know what? Straightforward. It got right? people over to the real one. So Liam's in there. He's like, oh, by the way, uh, Ming Chen's online right now. I said, oh. His uh, Instagram has a messenger feature. Yeah. So I was like, you, I'm like, message him. I'm like, message him and be like, hey, let him know that we accidentally set up the wrong account. And if you can right, come yeah. to the new one. And then Ming's like, sure. Boom. Yeah, and, of course. Yeah. 
so he did it. And then like, William's like, well, let's keep talking to him. I'm like, I don't know why you keep wanting to talk to these people. I'm like, they want nothing to do with us. I know. So, but maybe they did. All right. So we, we were list. So I was like, you know what? Ask him if he wants to be on episode 37. So Liam texts him and he's like, sure, of course. And we talked to him back and forth for a couple of minutes. But uh, are you going to explain the episode 37 thing? Um, so for people who don't know. So 37, Ming Chen alluded that it is a big number within the View Skew universe. And anybody who listened or watched Clerks, there is a reference to how many part- mouth partners. Uh, Dante, Dante, ha- Dante's girlfriend had with other men. Right. So, um, and she's like, I never had sex with these guys. And he's like, Well, how many did you? The other stuff with. And she's like, Thirty seven. He's like, Thirty seven. Um, so thirty seven is just a, a word dick joke in clerks. Um, but yeah, that was like we couldn't have been more than like six or seven episodes in before Liam's like, Hey, thirty episodes from now. He was like, Yeah, sure, I'll be on episode thirty seven <laughs> if you make it. So Bing Chan was the first one to get locked up for 37. Um, then as we got a little bit closer, um, I mean, I got a calendar up that I started tracking like probably almost three months in advance. Yeah. Just so I know where it lied. Mm-hmm. Cause then I was like, cause for a little while in the beginnings and like the teens, we were dropping like two episodes a week. Right. Right. I remember that. So yeah. I, I did the calendar and I was like, okay, we got to stop. I'm like, we can't do too many more episodes two in a week because I need... We're going to get there too fast. Right. Yeah. And then I was, oh, because if we did it too fast, we would have been Christmas. I'm like, I'm not asking any of these people to hang out with me on Christmas. Yeah, hey, do you guys mind like a <laughs> wishing your families for us? Um, so we started plotting and scheming it. And I was like, all right, Ming Chen's a fun episode. But then I was like, well, can you hit the X button on the PlayStation remote? So I was like, who else could we get? And then... And then right around that same time, we had the Little Wims webcomic come out. And I was like, okay. So once the webcomic comes out, because the first one was the undoxing of Tom and Steve Dave, it was me texting Brian saying sorry, right. kind of like episode one. And then the second panel is me laying on the couch being like, what are you doing? What's your favorite color? And then the third panel is Brian Johnson being like, Mary Beth, I think we need to change our phone number. Yeah. So I was like, all right, so I'll send. So once that drops... I'll email it to him and ask then if he wants to come on to the show. Mm-hmm. So it's like uh, 15 episodes in, maybe 20. We've got a comic. Like, we're still going. I'll let you know that Ming Chen's coming on. Right. And Keeping it fresh in his right? mind. And then, like, no response for a little while. And I was like, all right, all right, all right. We're, still, we're still October-ish. So um, I had been emailing Jay Sarge since probably episode like four or five and it was just like hey man how you doing like oh because it's um episode six um something are you listening which is a play off of one of jay sarge's albums on Bandcamp. yeah so like a little nod hopefully he saw it and i was like hey like would you be interested in or not interested like would you be willing to create our theme song and, and then he listens to the episode and i told him the story and he's like he's like that's super awesome like i love you guys like, oh, yeah he's like i'm busy right now i got some stuff going on and uh a promotion going on so i don't have a lot of time i said whenever you go, like, what about it in <laughs> mid-february right uh, but then i asked him like hey would you be willing to come on and he's like yeah just tell me when and where and i'm like probably sometime after the first of the year and he's like yeah that's perfect so we had jay sarge ming chen and then right around thanksgiving email Mary Beth again. I was like, hey, is there a chance we can get a Brian Johnson to, like, come on? And she's like, yeah, I talked to him. He said yes. Oh. So. Was that easy? I guess, but it took me, like, a month to even get a reply, so I was like, okay. And then Christmas rolls around, and I'm emailing him, like, hey, just let you guys know, like, we're looking sometime in February. Don't need to set a date now, but if you have a in general, something, if you want to plan that far ahead, just let us know. And then no reply. And then first of the year, because Brian Johnson's birthday, they got the Christmas episode for Tell Him Steve Dave. 
Um, the, all the holidays, so I, knew, I was like, all right. Oh, yeah, that's that's yeah. a busy time for right. everyone, so. So first of the year, I reply, I email again, and then they're like, no answer. So I was like, okay. All right, fuck it. I'm like, I, I have Ryan Johnson's number again, so I, oh, no. I text him. <laughs> <laughs> so I text him and Mary Beth and then email them, and then she replied back and said, yeah, he would do it. Mm-hmm. I said, great. And then I started looking at the calendar again. So 37 is going to be like, all right, so 37 is going to be on the 5th. They have the the cruise like two weeks earlier. So I was like, oh, man, we're running out of Sundays. And then he's like, finally, like, yeah, yeah, we can go ahead and do um, the the the, the 4th, uh, my mom's birthday. So I was like, okay, cool. So that day, we're at breakfast with mom. Brian texts me. He's like, uh, I'm sick. I think I have COVID. Is there a chance that we could? He's like, can we push this back? And I was like, I mean, if we have to, we can push it back. It's up to you. Well, yeah. It's, but I mean, but COVID. wink, wink. Like we've been pushing this. We've been promoting this episode really hard. That you're gonna be right? here and everything. So I'm like, whatever you want to do. He's like, no, we can. We can touch him to that. So. And he, he he came off as such a trooper. Like, yeah, he, he did. He was he was doing just so well. Like right. I cannot imagine being that articulate when I was sick. Right. Oh, and for sure. And then, um, like, I had mixed feelings about thir- the the Brian Johnson episode. Uh, we'll go into that in a minute. But um, it's weird to think that, like, 20 episodes in or less, like, I'm just reaching out to everybody and telling Steve Dave Town, like, who wants to come on? Yeah. Um, Liam, for a second, was like, uh, but then yes. And he, he kind of flandered back and forth a little bit, but... Uh, no, I'm sure he was nervous too. Yeah, like, so it's a big interview for somebody who, and it's like, and it's 13. weird. Yeah, and two of them in on TV, right? For seven seasons, like we know him, we watch him in the movies and stuff. So we're like, so he's. Just, I, I don't know. It was, it was interesting. We had a lot of fun with it. So no, Liam did really well though. He I did. If he was nervous, he was hiding it super well. He. He was so interesting and like alive. Yeah, he, he seemed to know like exactly when to ask questions and when right. to be quiet. It was it was great. Oh, so that was the origin of how we got to thirty seven. Now the process of each episode is, um, I would, I, I like J Sarge. Like I went deep dives on J Sarge. I got packets full. Of, like I printed out his blog. Oh my god. <laughs> Um, I found all, I found a bunch of stuff on SoundClick and like he even he, mentioned it. He's like, "What? He, that that still probably, exists." This dude's probably watching like for like cameras in his house right now. Oh man! And then like I haven't seen SoundClick in fifteen years. Oh. So now you just accessed it. Well, and then I'm like, as I'm reading it, I'm like, "All right, let's find out who Dad is." Mm-hmm. And I'm like, "Where if this is the same Dad?" So I got to email Jay Sarge again and be like, "Hey, how you been?" Um. And he's like, yeah, that's my dad. So I'm like, okay, cool. Yeah. So I have, so I pull a bunch of research because I want to have some topics and some. I outlined all three episodes, mm-hmm. and then I gave Liam a copy and says, "Are you okay with with the outline? Like, kind of where the questions are going to go and kind of what order." And he was okay with them. Um, Ming Chen, I did. We recorded first, and I had that big opening for Ming Chen. Yeah. And he, and he loved it. So, so as I'm kind of researching it. I'm trying to like create these long, like two and a half minute, three minute um, long uh, intros. And cause that's a Kevin Smith thing. Yeah. So I did that and I did one for Brian Johnson and then Jay Sarge. Like I, 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 I had one and then I was like, no, nah, I'm just going to stick to the, to the story. And um, we'll, we'll just go that route. And then, when we got him on, like right before recording, you could tell he was a little bit shy. And I was like, because like I've never listened to him before, so I was like, right. I'm like, thank God. Like somehow it worked out that I didn't have a huge drawn out. Right. So, um, so yeah, outlined everything. Now the only one critique, and I'll leave it alone after that, is my process for each episode was research outline. And then some variation of like a, an intro. Yeah. And Ming Chen, J. Sarge, Liam was there. He went, he sat and gave me like 10 minutes and we went through the outline. And I was like, here's, here's how we can kind of 
uh, transition from one section into the next into the next. Right. And then he listened to both of the openings and he was good with it. Brian Johnson, Liam that day, for whatever reason, was just like, I just want to go sit on the trailer in the back and just kind of just do his own thing and, and, and buds. Yeah, but maybe that was like his psych up routine. You know I what know, I mean? But I went like out. He's got to listen to his music and just like get into himself so he knows he's not going to be nervous. Right? Well, clearly he wasn't because that was like he was the best on Johnson. But like I looked at him, I'm like, I have a process, dude. I'm like, I need you. I need 10 minutes, man. I need you to walk through this with me so that I am ready and prepared. Right. And he bailed on me. <laughs> he's like, yeah, figure out your own. Stuff. Oh my God. Like all the way up, so all the way up to like two o'clock. Like, so from like one to two, like I'm looking at everything. I'm looking at the intro and like I'm scratching stuff out and, re- and moving you're it around. You're preparing though. You need somebody to bring you down. Yes. That's what you're saying. That's you're, what I needed you, him. You were here. You needed to be like here. Right. Because I'm like, I just didn't like the way certain things flow. So I, I just moved a couple of things around. So it looks like garbage. And then I'm trying to read it. And you guys, thank God you guys didn't hear the original cut yeah. of Brian Johnson's. Because I fumbled my entire way through that opening. And I was like, Liam looking at me, he's like embarrassed. That's the magic of the podcast. I know. Just re-record it. Good Lord. So I should have just re-recorded it and then just put it right in the front of it. So my one critique was, and I don't know if Liam will ever hear this, is I definitely need somebody to give me the 15 minutes to walk through what the episode looks like. Right. And then because I can't read out loud very well. The, you're hitting the panic button yeah. here. Well, and he's sick. Yeah, and then I was yeah. like, "Oh, and so I was oh, like, yeah, I didn't think about that. Yeah, you wouldn't be able to read out loud, right? <laughs> yeah, so my dyslexia doesn't yeah. let me read out loud very well. So I was like, so I mean, Chance was good, but I have to slow down. You could totally, totally tell I'm reading it. I'm like, fine, fuck you guys, I'm reading it. <laughs> right, <laughs> I'm not reciting this from memory. This is right. Shakespeare. Um, and then, no, but it came out really well. So it, it did, was... but I had I edited so many ums and long ass pauses out. Oh my god. <laughs> Like it was 48 minutes and the whole intro, like they cut out like six minutes of it. Not really. But yeah, my one critique was um, somebody, I'm going to start reaching out to you or, or Kelly um, like the week before or a couple of days before. I'd be like, I just, just need you guys to listen to me for a minute. Just read, let's read through yeah. it. Yeah, we could. So, um, so you could have just called us day of, what were we doing? Nothing. Right. Well, and it was a, a, Sunday. We were probably just like, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, that's my one my one critique is I, I found out that I have a process that I because I, I spend days writing all this stuff out. But I just need that one day where I can like mock interview through the, the outline. Yeah, it's kind of like you build up a lot of tension. Yeah. Preparing and you just need to let it out a little yeah. bit just to. Right. And it's, and then they kind of help focus like because like there's a couple questions you just completely scratch out like that doesn't make any sense. Yeah. Or it just. Yeah. Right. It's gonna go on a photo of right. tangent, superfluous, whatever. Right. And what was interesting about all the all three episodes is very little mention of Tell Him Steve Dave. Like I just like it wasn't like huge fan service yeah, yeah, of Tell yeah. Steve Dave. It was more about them and I thought it was interesting. Yeah, more as a person, their right. processes and their interests. Because I I watch interviews every once in a while and it bothers me how much people ask the dumbest questions. Stuff that they've been asked on every, you know. Who's your favorite superhero, Ming Chen? Like, he was on Comic Book Man. He's been to a hundred cons. Right. You don't think he's heard that question before? Yeah, ask him something more personal. Or right. More Do your kids listen to you? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. That's always crazy, though. Yeah. Because, like, you hear, hear even, like, movie stars. Mm-hmm. Like, it was, like, Brad Pitt or something. Oh, well, yeah, my kids don't watch my stuff. Like, like what? Yeah. I mean, Liam doesn't even listen to the episodes uh, I do myself. Johnny Depp doesn't even watch his own stuff. Right. Like, he, he says it, like, makes him nervous yeah. or cringe or whatever. I'm like, I didn't feel that. I don't listen to my own episodes of this podcast. No? So when you're saying, will Liam listen to this? I won't listen to it. Um, you're, it's, you're up, like, it, like, as far as guests go, people love the Megan episodes. That's not true. 100%. <laughs> People love the yeah. Megan episode so much. So that's her that, sister in the comments. No, going to <laughs> no. Wow, Megan's great. So much that most of the shorts I pull, Kelly's like, "Why are all the shorts Megan?" I'm like, "Leave me alone." <laughs> She's gold. That's need, not true. I need the twin in the algorithm. <laughs> oh, that's very flat. So, um, all right. Part one, Jay Sarge. Your impressions. 
Okay, like I said, yeah, he's so... Seems like such a sweet guy, but also you can tell that he's very, like, intelligent. I like when you asked him to, like, describe his process. Mm -hmm. And he goes, um, yeah, I I can't. (laughs) Like, I I can't. I just, I, I don't even know what I do to make music happen right. and it's not like he thinks of it like in like instruments or in just like sheet music and i was like yeah it would be hard to describe like a creative process sometimes right like, especially music right well because you get sometimes you get artists that are like they sit down at the piano and they just pound away and they're just marking it for days right. and it's like a trial and error mm-hmm. he's just like he just like i just pitch him lean back looking at it and just being like got it <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he just looks into the middle distance. Yeah. He's like, all right, got it. Um, on his YouTube, he has a, he has a, a song on there. Uh, the comments was, he was watching the cows go from the north to the south pasture and just sitting on his porch listening to the cows just walk by his house. Right. And like, so, like, so he sits out there and just watches them. He listens to the cows talking to each other. And all of a sudden, he's just like, got it. And he goes back inside, and he's just like, and there's this, like, this really cool, he's interesting... Give the, he's gonna give the cow's writing credit right? on that one. He did. Um, so, yeah, he does, his process is fun. It's interesting. Um, and I like the fact that he doesn't... He, he, play, he You play, what, two and a half instruments, three and a half instruments? Right. But, yeah, he's like... what he say, drums when nobody's listening, yeah. or if nobody's watching or something like that? And it's like, the idea that he can play with all these different sounds mm-hmm. and really only know how like he has obviously a clearly an understanding of how music works and how it sounds yeah right? but he's like no i can't play any of it so that's why i do all the synth and the electronic stuff so uh, i thought that was fantastic yeah and it comes out great like, mm-hmm. all right and i don't think we've actually i mentioned it on the live stream yesterday um <laughs> the opening that you hear on the beginning that's a j sarge original yeah honestly it reminds me kind of like of uh Old school video gaming for yes, some reason. Like yes. it gives you that say like get up get up and go spirit of like you see the like start screen. Yeah. And you press start and that music starts yeah. playing. Um and it has a little like it has a hint of um Gravity Falls influence. Mm-hmm. Um because that's what we were, I'm like I'm musically retarded. And I was like <laughs> so I'm like, um Gravity Falls, and I was like, and I tried to explain it, and we were emailing back and forth. He's like, I don't know what you mean. I'm like, I don't know what I mean either. I don't know what I mean. <laughs> he was so <laughs> patient with me. <laughs> um, so, and then, when, I don't know if you guys have noticed yet, um, there's two intros. There's the Chase and the Whimsy, and then there's oh, the Whimsy Live. Live. Yeah. There's a slight variation between mm-hmm. the two. Um, and I like the first, the, the Whimsy Live one, but I'm like, not for classic whimsy so he, he changed it a little bit and that's where we got it and then i was like hey can i have both and he's like yeah so he's a super nice guy so um huge shout out to jay sarge for the uh the intro music oh, it, it was so sweet okay so sorry yeah. sorry but when he was like oh yeah and i listened to some of your stuff i'm like oh he's just being nice you know how people are they just say okay yeah i listened right. but he's like oh yeah i like this episode and i like that you do this with this and i listened to one of your lives like, dude, this guy actually listens to the podcast. He even, he even threw out that he he listens to the Yellowstone stuff. Yeah, the, he yeah he mentioned Yellowstone. Yeah. I was like, man, he even listens to JJ stuff. That's right? crazy. So yeah, that's awesome because like but that was so genuine. Yes, to, like because anybody could say, oh yeah, I must listen to right. stuff. Um, also interesting is like his relationship with music. Mm-hmm. He's like, I want to know how to do it, and then he got to a point where he's like, no, <laughs> not in front of people. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I, but that's like a great like niche that he found yeah. where he can use music and come up with music but not have to do it in front of anybody right. and I, I totally feel you I can't even type if somebody's watching me so. <laughs> um, and then like uh, what I found was really interesting was the non-pressure his parents put on him to do music but mm-hmm. he, he took it on himself to carry this burden of like I'm not one of the greats like these two are. And they're like, you don't have to be. Right. And he's like, I think I need to be. <laughs> I think I need to be. Well, I wonder how much of that was just like locked in him. Like yeah. musical talent. Is that just a thing that you carry with you? And it's like, well, I 
kind of have to. Right. You know? But uh, I'm glad that he found an outlet to at least be able to kind of, like, show off. Like, like I do have a, a musical skill. Yeah, and it doesn't have to necessarily be exactly what your parents did. Right. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh, you're an actor and you have, your dad's an actor, you have to be an actor. Right. Your mom does this, you have to do this. It's like, he found his own niche, his yeah. own way to, like, practice like the thing that both his parents are right. interested in and great at. And like, how cool is it that mom and dad are in like hard classical yeah. like genre and that dad loves everything that he does, like in, in the electronic and well, the. That's usually what's going to happen because you know, you, you hear this new sound yeah. and you go, oh, this is, this is it. Oh, so yeah. So huge shout out to Jay Sarge. Um, what else did you really like about 37 part one? Part one. Um, Liam seemed to be very engaged, and I liked his good questions, and I liked the idea that this all like wrapped up in how we knew that Liam liked Tesdy and yeah. all that stuff. Like it just kind of brought a little bit of heart to yeah. it. Um, what do we think about his music or his uh, his movie career? <laughs> his movie career, where he he says, "No, you can't even watch these two short films," <laughs> uh, which means. He might still have copies of them. Oh, they're they're out there. And you know what? If you're out there watching 15-year-old things on SoundCloud or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Sound Jay, click, yeah. Jay Sarge, we're going to find them. And so, we're going to watch them. So I just need yeah. to go into like 30-year-old like the the film festival and then be like, all right, so I'm sure he submitted it. So I'm right. going to find the submission before they took it off. Hey, so I gotta you guys go... save your submissions even if you don't show them? Right. Or, like, what if I go into, like, the Wayback Machine and see if I can find <laughs> it before they took it off? <laughs> uh, uh, like, I, he's so bashful about it, too. Like, everything he makes, he's like, seems like, yeah, it's kind of good. And you're like, dude, you're awesome and yeah. talented. And he's like, oh, sure. Yeah. Uh, I, yeah, that was funny. Like, um, it was it was funny because like you could tell he was a little little nervous and a little shy about it, but the second the cat jumped on, every, we all just we all lightened up and like he's fantastic. He's he already said he'd come on again. Oh, that's so great! So he, yeah, he was really good. I don't know. Um, there was a there was a charm to that episode. There was, and, and he's, that's not to say that either of the other episodes right. was bad because they were also really good. But but well, and as we kind of go through, I'm like, it's interesting that what Liam and I were able to do with three like completely d different and distinct right. types of interviews. Like we can hit the, the Jay Sarges and the, the quiet, the, 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 like the, the family life. And then we can go into like the, the bigger celebrity who's always on a con and who's always trying to like push and sell himself. And then we got the guy who's Brian Johnson. Of <laughs> got on podcast. Oh, um, yeah. And I think, I think that was my favorite part about all three episodes is that, we were able to, because like, do you get some people who, uh, like Diane Sawyer or some of these other people, they, they always keep most of their interviews structurally the same. Right. And it's like the same thing over and over. Um, what was it? Barbara Walters back in the day was like, I promise I won't cry because she always got everybody to cry. And and, was, yeah. You yeah. don't want to hear the same thing because like if, if I was on like iHeartRadio or whatever, I just like, put in Ming Chen, I could find a thousand podcasts with him on it. And you don't want to hear the same questions mm -hmm. and him saying the same things over every single podcast. Right. Like, oh, well, what was interesting too is like we, he, Jay Sarge has a, a people like Jay Sarge. They, any of the Tell Steve Day people, they know him. Right. And, but outside of that, like you don't see him on podcasts a lot. He did Bro. do one for a little bit. Jay Sarge, hearts in love. You're such a ghost, dude. Yeah. I was trying to like explain <laughs> Jay Sarge to somebody who's never even heard of Tess D. Yeah. And so I'm like, oh, here, let me just Google. And I go to you Google him. 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 And I was like, I can't find a picture of him. I can't find like there was a picture of him, like a picture of Jay Sarge, and it was Brian Johnson <laughs> just sitting there, and I was like, bro, come on. Yeah, you need to call me because I got all the links for all the, like, yeah, the weird Yeah, people were losing interest in my conversation. I was like, no, seriously, I, I'm telling you. Um, he, I think if you're going to, so if you guys want to find Jay Sarge, um, search Remedial M Theory, yeah. and you'll have better luck finding him on Bandcamp. Uh, other grandma today was like, I tried to find him on Bandcamp, and she's like, I can't find him. I'm like, oh, Remedial 
M dash theory is where you'll find most yeah. of his. And music. I, I eventually got there, but then I was like, I was trying to get like a real yeah. quick so people could recognize him right. and stuff like that. Um, he's currently yeah. posting stuff on YouTube again. So nice. he had a uh, like a four or five year old drought. Um, he, I mentioned on his episode that he had a new album coming out. I don't remember the name of it right now, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, but he took one of the songs from that, put a little music video, kind of mm-hmm. like how we did, and threw it up. So um, on the live stream, I told everybody to pause, go on to YouTube, um, J.K. Stimpy, and subscribe to Jay Sarge. So let's get that guy up to 50, because then we can get him live streaming. Yeah. And then I can jump on. Oh, there we go. Oh, yeah. That's when you get a J Star, a J Sarge live stream. Oh, we should do it. So let's get J Sarge to 50, and then I'll try to talk him into a random uh, live stream with me and him and kind yeah. of just play around. He'd be chill with it. I, was, I think even, I and mean, what's interesting is like, like, like Sarah, even I'm like, record yourself drawing. Just be, I, people like, like that kind of stuff. And even if we can get him to live stream, he just like cameras like oh, like he doesn't have to show us let's 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 see some of your process. Give me like an hour of you working on something. Right. You don't yeah. even need to dictate it to us. I just want to I want to see what it looks like. Right. It was just you staring out in space for an hour. Go for it. I want to see the cows. Yeah. We want to hear we want to hear the mooing and see yeah. if we can see the same thing you did. So uh, everybody go to YouTube um, at JK Stimpy and uh, subscribe to him. Um, I think. Since I mentioned it yesterday, um, I tweeted out a couple of things about his new album and everything. So I think he's like seven or eight new followers in this, like the last three days. So yeah, um, we can easily get him to 50. Oh, easily. So everybody pause. We'll wait. Welcome back. Thank you for subscribing. Um, any other comments about Jay Sarge's episode? Um, it was just fantastic. I loved it. All right. I hope he comes back. I'm trying to figure out like. We can just bring him back whenever he would do it, but I want to try to have Maybe. something a little bit more. Yeah. Um, but I want to have some kind of little theme ish or a kind of general idea of what I want to talk to him about. So, yeah. Um, all right. Episode or part two Ming Chen. See, Ming probably had the best energy. I mean, I won't hold that against Brian right. Johnson because he was <laughs> on his deathbed right. or whatever recording for Chasing the Whimsy. But, um, Ming had the best energy, and I don't know. He was like the like cheerleader for the podcast, yeah. and I felt like it was nice to hear. Like you know, he's proud of the boys. And yeah, he's proud of where you guys have come and everything like that. So that was nice. And hearing like a lot of his insider information was so interesting. Mm-hmm. Like it, I mean, like even boring stuff. Like he'll be like, "Yes, yeah, being on a movie set it's interesting because you just stand around for half the day." I'm like, "Oh my god, you would think it would be so." exciting one right. thing after another literally you're just munching on craft services sandwiches and waiting for yourself to be called right unless you're on a kevin smith movie right then you do same thing four times and then let's go um kevin smith is notorious for doing like 28 date shoots where you'll they'll rehearse a bunch of stuff for like two weeks and the second that they start filming stuff they go he goes crazy he's like two takes move move on and then every night he does all of his editing but yeah but that makes it more organic yeah because then the same thing that you've been practicing just comes out naturally right and if there's mistakes it sounds like it's in universe right so so yeah like the idea like some of these larger uh productions they shoot for five six months if not years right and then means like no no kevin smith boom in and out <laughs> yeah You've got weeks. Yes. Um, what's interesting about Ming's, I sent him the outline, and Ming Chen is a fucking professional, man. You could tell he's a podcaster. Yeah. He kept all that stuff flowing. Like, like he knew what the next bullet point was, and he got us into every one of them. Like, he was crazy good at he keeping that. He wasn't going to let you guys miss a single stop no. on the road. So, like, half of the transitions, he got us there. And I was yeah. like, oh, nice. Oh, I love this guy. Because <laughs> I'm sitting there looking at it and trying not poor, to read the book. Poor Ben. Because, like, whenever, I don't know, 
how it works with you guys, you and Liam. Yeah. But when you, we're, you're recording with me, I'm just like, okay, point one, point four, point two, point six, point one again. Yeah. Just by the way, <laughs> I forgot something over there. And you, you, you gave me the outline. Yeah. Of <laughs> you prepared me. <laughs> I have it in front of me. Right? <laughs> Still just jumping around. Oh, uh, he's yeah, he was fantastic. I, I love uh, his energy was good. Uh, what else do we like about Ming Chen? Favorite moment of Ming Chen? Um, I think mostly just him talking about how proud he was of you guys. Because I don't know, I'm proud of you guys, and it felt good hearing that from like an outsider, if that makes sense. Right. And it's interesting a lot of the stuff like he talks about with like podcasting mm-hmm. and it's stuff that you wouldn't think about, but it's also very interesting. Like, mm-hmm. And what was I, I like that he also real like when he was kind of going through all the things that we have, he's like, you got the website, the social, he's like, you got like, he's like, you got a web comic. I'm like, he even knows we have a web comic. He, he looks into it. Yeah. Like, I, I know I was like, yeah, Jay Sarge really did yeah. his homework, but you know me. Yeah. So hard. Like it's part, like he's part of like his personality. Yeah. It's just no, he's going to and where he's going. Well, he, cause like, he's like, that's a shared universe podcast over there. He's like, I gotta make sure they're doing it right. And, yep. We're, we're a tiny part of the universe now. Right. And he's like, no, you guys are doing it. He's like, you guys are killing it. So I was like, there we go. Uh, so all you guys who are like, this is hard. It's not that hard. Like me and Liam are doing it. And, and, and we, you know, Ming's like, you know, like what he was saying is like, just keep doing it. Your audience will eventually find you. He's like, keep up with the socials and just promote yourself. Well, yeah, a lot of it is <clears> just like, keep going, keep going, keep going. Because you never know, like with algorithms mm-hmm. and everything like that today, like eventually something will catch on. Right. So and then a lot of times, a lot of times now with the podcast, especially, it's like TikToks and YouTube shorts. Yeah. Like somebody will see a short of the podcast and that way so they don't have to like listen to a whole hour episode. They'll hear some shorts. They'll hear a couple of shorts and they'll go, oh yeah, I like all the shorts from this podcast. Right. Now I'm going to actually listen right. to it. So I feel like that's another area where it's, where it's a good that you guys are pushing it mm-hmm. and it shows up on my phone all the time new short right new this new that new that so yeah, keep up on that stuff it's definitely pushing to the followers yeah. at least um oh no and, and yes. then um also sorry yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> no i was talking about i was like blake you remember yeah. Blake, who i shouted out um like a couple episodes ago he's like yeah whimsy kept keeps getting pushed into my feed too <laughs> 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 Sounds like my mom. Uh, if anybody you guys listen, uh, I have this thing that where if I can, I try to say something that what my mom will will get and just laugh out loud. She, uh, on the live streams, like I think I mentioned it, but I come over, she's like, she's whimsy's like because she goes to Google News yeah. and she's sc- scrolling through the feed and stuff, and she sees whimsy come up every once in a while. She's like. <gasps> Whimsy's everywhere. I'm like, mom, I appreciate that. But I said, I, I think you only Google like a handful of things. And I think most of the stuff you do is whimsy. So what I'm saying is, is we spam people with whimsy links. No joke. Sa- sans context. Yeah. Sans context. Because I don't even know if Blake liked that post right. that I first sent him or whatever, but it'll be in their feeds. Yes. And, and I, I told Liam, I'm like, that's why I do the shorts, man. It's going to eventually get to a point where there's so much chasing the whimsy, like you're, you're gonna, you can't miss it. Somebody's, yeah, people yeah. pick it up and then it pushes, 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 pushes. Yeah, they're like, they keep thumb down in it. I'm like, there's too many of them coming through. Yeah, too, too bad. <laughs> Eventually, you get tired of thumbs down. You'll just, you're like, my pocket, I'll give it a chance. <laughs> and they do push things that get like, like thumbs down sometimes. Yeah. Because not that our stuff gets thumbs down a lot. It's... But, um, Oh yeah, Ming Chan was so fun. Um, he would mention like he did a uh, Tuscon once. Yeah. Uh, somewhere in the interview, he kind of it was a kind of a weird throwaway comment, and I was like, oh. But he's gonna try to come down and do the one down here, and I'm like, I'm going to go all three days because if Ming Chen's showing up, don't think I'm not gonna be hanging out with Ming Chen for a day. So Ming Chen. Oh, Phoenix Chen. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, hey, if you come down. I'll I'll buy a, I'll buy a a shared universe jacket with the whimsy on it. Like yeah. I'm gonna be right there with you. I want to know how the con thing works because yeah, if you're coming down here, I will be. Yes, <laughs> I gotta learn from the master. Um, it'd be fun to hit the con. Oh, yes, I think we talked about it a little bit. I think I'm gonna go all three days. Yeah, and then um, I think Liam will go day three, and Is then 
Sunday. Yeah, it would be Sunday. And then I talked to you and Kelly, and I think we're going to try and see if you guys want to go like a Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Um, but I figure I can go Friday and get some some content for for the for Chasing the Wednesday. And if you guys come up, you guys can get some content with me. And then Sunday, I'll just leave it just with me and Liam. Because we did discuss talking like at Tuscon. Yeah. And we, we thought about it. We really thought about like talking to random people. Yeah. We didn't do it. I think we should. Like. I think so too. Um, and I bet you people at Tuscon would have talked to us. Oh, 100%. They, they were all so nice. They and, were. Um, I am going to reach out to Tuscon next year and be like, hey, can we be the official Tuscon podcast? Yeah, we're family friendly. We're family friendly. I'll drop a couple. Like we could set up just oh, like almost right where we were. Yeah. And then um we'll keep a sign up sheet that says, uh, you know, this two hour chunk, we're just gonna live stream what's happening on the floor, what's going on in the con. We have, we'll like, do that flash tw- questions for people, like people are walking by, right? we just ask them, Hey, you know, what's this? You know? Right. And then I figure like we do uh like two different two like a couple of time slots where we're just live. Yeah. And then We'll just like the panels, we'll leave a couple of openings so people can just come in and sign up and be like, Oh, you have a booth? Come over and hang out for a half hour. You yeah. got to sign up. Sit down, sign up, talk about what we want right. to do, then leave. Right. Next person jumps in. So, yeah. Um, I think Ming Chen is going to be uh, the inspiration for when I start conning. Yeah. Because he's out there. He, you check his Instagram and his Facebook pictures everywhere. He's got people with him all over the place. It's a fun scene, though. Yeah. I can- you know, what, you know what, sh- I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> if I have to get back to the fact that you've never been to a con before, uh, we might talk for another four hours. Right. All right. Um, part three, Brian Johnson. Brian Johnson, R.I.P. No, <laughs> <laughs> no, he was great. I feel like, if anything, like Ming Chen's got that energy, but Brian Johnson's just got that mojo, dude. Yeah. Like he's he got that so smooth. He's got that that sexy voice too. Yeah. Even sick. But he's just like he was so good at like moving like through the topics, but also bringing back to him, and also yeah. like taking any comments for you and Liam, and you know. So you could tell I was a little bit J Sarg mommy's like, oh, you were nervous. So I'm like, and I don't know why I was nervous. Part of it I think was because I was unprepared, right? And then for whatever reason, I felt like the Brian Johnson was the one I needed to more like impress. not impress. It was impressing the most, like. For whatever reason, his his opinion, like he was going to give me an opinion of it, right? Like, like we were going to, and he's like, "Oh, <laughs> oh, we found a fourth for Tom Steve Dave." <laughs> <laughs> like I knew it wasn't going to be that, but like for whatever reason, I was just like, "Ming Chen, he, he's a nice guy. He he has no bad and say to anything." Of course, he's so nice. He's like, oh, what was the Kelly? They said he had Labrador energy. Yeah. Like he's yes. so positive and so nice and so right? like energetic at all times. And then Brian Johnson, like you listen to the the Tom Steve Dave, and everybody's so honest with each other. Right. And I was like, all right, um, I don't want him to be like, what the fuck are you doing? Why are you doing this? You suck at it. So I knew he was never gonna say that, but I was definitely nervous in the beginning. And when I went back and re-listened to it, because I told I told Kelly like that Monday, I'm like, I hate everything about yeah. part three. She told me you were freaking out. I'm like, I'm losing my mind. And I'm like, oh god. It's gonna happen, I and then I listened to it. And I was like, "It's fine." What? And it was fine. It's fine. And it's the, fine. <laughs> like, but if you listen to like the first like uh, fifteen minutes, can I talk over the guy anymore? <laughs> like, can I can I not like like? Oh, sorry, sir. You want to say something? Let me just throw yeah. in this little anecdote. I'm like, what am I doing talking over this guy for days? Because you were nervous. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man. I'm sure he's used to it. Like. <sighs> And he handled it so well. He was he's not like like yo dude stop yeah. jumping over me. He understood it. Like he understood where you're coming um, from. Um I did think that I might the it might have gone it, it ended up perfect. It, it's just like the some of the early episodes where I was like, Liam, these episodes suck and they weren't that bad. Yeah, they um, are not that bad. They're not that bad. I um, love the early episodes. For a minute I was like I think it went on a couple of minutes too long, but it really didn't. It was a nice 48 minutes, I think, maybe. Yeah, I don't think it went on too long. Yeah. And, like, despite the fact that he was sick, he consummate progression. Yeah. Like, literally. Yeah. And it's so easy to listen to him talk. I mean, I honestly don't listen to a lot of Tennessee. <laughs> so, like, I haven't had a lot of interest. I might be interested. <laughs> like, he might have gained one fan by going on Wednesday. So, good job, Brian Johnson. Right? You got me on this one. So, um, 
his, I like the story about his mom and where yeah. he got horror from because I do the same thing. Yeah. Um, like most of the live stream, I keep talking about my mom, and it's just like one I'm and kind you, of you fighting got, for. You got your uh, jokes for one, yeah. On your shorts. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, I bet you this is for his mom. <laughs> Dumbest like, thing in the world. <laughs> Every time I'm like, I think this is for his mom because I don't know what the fuck this is. <laughs> oh god, it's so stupid. I'm slow on YouTube. I have the shorts. I have the I have the web comic, and I have all the shorts. And then just like placeholders. Yeah. I make shorts of random things I want to talk about on the live, and then at least way I know where they're at, my, right. my clips are at. And I just titled them Laugh for One. And there's almost no context to them whatsoever. Dude, I was literally head scratching the first time I got one in my feed. Because I was just like, what is this? It says, I love you, Mom. <laughs> there's no context. The description just says, Your mom's just like, I get it. I, get it. <laughs> I completely messes with my entire catalog. Where it's just like shorts, comics, and then random Random like, clips of uh, like uh, commercials. Oh and... my god! You should see the ones I have saved. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, it's so funny. Oh, and like I, I can only imagine people swiping through and be like, "What is this?" Well, like he's chasing the whimsy. Anyways, they got this five second short of oh, a commercial oh, from the eighties. It was the scooter one where he's he's what was the word ridiculousness? Yeah, or something. And then at the halfway through, he plays backwards. Oh my god, it's the dumbest commercial I've ever seen. Oh, righteousness, righteous, something. Oh my god, that is so funny. So yeah. <laughs> oh my god, my mom said she laughed out loud. Oh my god. Oh, there's some other stuff that is so funny. Yeah, like for whatever reason, I was like, oh, I'm just gonna put these out there for real. I'm like, I because I, I could just like private them so I can still look at them when I do the live stream. No, no. You guys can see the random stuff that maybe you might remember. You'd be like, "Why?" Like, makes you laugh, you know? Like maybe you got the scooter, or you remember Jim McMahon, and you're like, "Oh, right. what is this?" And you find chasing the wind. You throw it. That's the funniest thing in the world. Oh, I had so much fun. But yeah, because I do uh, like all my weird like B movies mm-hmm. I got from my mom because she watched all those like Lifetime movies, right? So I'm like, "Oh, okay." I'll, like, so when I'm watching movies, I'll watch God knows whatever. Um, I can't, I can't get into the Hallmark Christmas, Christmas movies that she and other grandma do. I yeah, can't do that's it, man. Gotta, that's gotta be a stretch. Those Dude, are... she records all of them. Like all They're 48 all... of them. Why didn't she just record one? They're all the same. I don't know. Uh, that's so funny. The li- Lifetime movies are other shit. Oh. Like, come on. I'll watch the live stream tomorrow because, or today when you guys listen to this. Um. Because I'm gonna, I got some, I got some mad callbacks for some Lifetime movies. Like it's gonna be amazing. Oh, okay. Uh, Brian Johnson. Um, what else do we like about him? I like that he like just like we don't want a hundred thousand million followers. He's like, I'll just take what we get. Oh yeah, he said that, yeah. I have like a very niche yeah fan group, and you know we just make what we make, and don't worry about what anyone else is gonna be like. <laughs> What anyone else is gonna like? And he's giving advice, saying like, you know, don't go out there trying to look for what's popular or what's trending, or just make whatever you want. Right. And then you know, if you have, if there's people who's interested in that, they're gonna find right. you. And I like that because you know, some a lot of people try to like follow every trend on TikTok or in podcasting, whatever it is, and it doesn't necessarily fit their yeah their vibes, but you could tell they're just trying to grow their channel. Right. They, they, they all watch the same video that says Here, how to build an audience or how right. to, cause like, like I make fun of the, the, the backdrop and the kitchen for the live, mm-hmm. but then I actually started looking at like everybody else's podcasts and their live streams and stuff. It's one of like three different layouts. It's either two chairs looking right. at each other with the mic arms in your face of course, or yeah. a table similar to ours, and it's a back and forth, or it's a single sitting on his bed in his bedroom. I'm like, yeah. this isn't that far off from what everybody else is doing. Not to mention that, like, so many live streams and podcasts and stuff like you see are more memorable yeah. if they have something weird, like 
dude, I've been watching this guy's kitchen for five years. <laughs> what goes on in that kitchen? I have to know. Like, uh, I don't know if you've ever noticed that the opening on the Whimsy Live, it, it's like, what does it say? So it's uh, uh, Jason the Whimsy pre- uh, presents Whimsy Live with host Ben and in kitchen. The kitchen. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> you were showing us in the live stream i'm like is this just for the live stream like is this just him kidding around is this gonna be the actual thing i'm like i like it oh kitchen oh, oh i love it i love the idea i'm trying to do some stuff with the kitchen i did uh, like a couple episodes back i was like i'm gonna do a kitchen cam kitchen <laughs> cam and it's just a flat shot of the kitchen or just over there in the corner Honestly. just watching me podcast from yeah. the kitchen um yeah you, you're just back here just like so as I was saying on um, Chasing the Whimsy Live. Oh, so mic'd up back there. Well, I wanted to do it low key, but I gotta get that channel. I gotta get Whimsy Kitchen to 50. So I'm gonna push everybody to get Whimsy Kitchen to 50 and then never talk about it again. And you guys can just watch random kitchen, kitchen videos. Kitchen. Oh. It's a whole backlog, it's just the live stream from yeah. the kitchen two hours at a time. Oh. Uh, have you ever seen Vulgar? Mm-mm. The Brian Johnson movie? No, I haven't. Uh it's a it's an it's a it's a good movie. It has uh Brian O'Halloran, who's Dante from Clerks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's a clown. And then there's a really early like version of um Brian Johnson and Kevin Smith in it. Mm-hmm. Early version. Or yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna call every childhood picture of me. This is an early version yeah. of me. Uh but what was it? It I was, was smaller back yeah. then. Uh, but he was, uh, it was before the beard and he was all Metro. Mm-hmm. Um, but the plot of it is clown isn't getting enough work as a kid's party clown. So he's mm-hmm. not going to do bachelorette parties. Right. So uh, dad and his two sons hire him. And then they end up like R in him. Like, yeah. It was, it, so it's crazy. And then he kind of just like falls into this depression, comes out and then makes a career like a becomes a tv clown like a barney or something so, so it was like super dark it was dark it was dark it was crazy it has uh ian Sampleth in it i really like that though i like that kind of like dark twisted you, you don't see movies about that no like uh yeah i know it was, yeah it was just weird well especially now oh yeah it, for it was sure. more of a trend back then to have like a little bit more dangerous movies and it was it's perfect for the year it came out like like 97 98 mm-hmm. You couldn't make it now. But it wasn't going to be successful then, but it, it does find a cult following somewhere. Of course, yeah. yeah. Eventually, it's going to be these 30,000 people's yeah. favorite movies. Yes. And so, <laughs> but it's never going to make you box office millions. Right. No. Um, and that dark tone he does in um, Carney. Carney is a weird yeah. comic book. Um and then War of the Undead was kind of an interesting one, and Walt Flanagan draws all of them. Mm-hmm. So I just like the idea that he just like he just writes to write, and he's just kind of like where you're at, where he's like I'm just gonna write to write for a little bit, and then uh, you write to write, and then just kind of just do your own thing. Mm-hmm. Like there are people who would go, "Is this too dark? Is this too you know whatever right. it is?" But I like that he's willing to explore his own imagination and just go, ah, "Whatever, here you go." Oh, it not was, whatever. Like, right. Obviously, he worked very hard on it, right. but. Well, because what was it back, Kelly, was it 12, 13, 2012, 13, when I was writing my little short stories? Okay. So it kind of gives me like this renewed like confidence to be like, all right, I wrote some of these weird short stories that for the most part were, I I enjoyed them. I enjoyed writing them. I found some really creative and. And I've read part of them yes and this was like this is some lost media yes yeah. because <laughs> i remembered this and i was like trying to tell kelly i was like yo didn't ben like write a short story or something she was like yeah he wrote like kids stories but this wasn't a kid story. No, no. <laughs> no. no i'm like no i swear to god this is like when you first yeah. met him and i'm like sitting here like scratching my head and then i came and asked you about it and you're like oh yeah i did write stuff like that I'm like, I, now did. I, now I need to know um so I still have them. I gave uh, other grandma a copy of them, all of them because she used to keep copies of all the stuff I wrote. So I was like, uh, I'm gonna, I gave it to her and I said, read it. I said, comment, don't comment. I said, do, I'm like, I'm not looking for any feedback just because it's a little bit on the weird, darker yeah. side. But it's not like weird, dark. It was kind of like, um, 
I know it's super cryptic, everybody. Sorry, you're going to have to deal with it. Um, and so I decide whether or not, when and how and where I'm going to put them out. Um, Don't worry, I'll leak it once I find it. I'm going to go to the hypnotist and get it from my memory. Um, yeah, but like, they're, like, they're dark in that, like, every at the end of every short story, someone dies, yeah. basically. Um, but it's kind of just, it follows, like, the the days leading up to. Mm. And it's just something kind of nice and kind of, like, sweet and honest and, like, real genuine about about it so but for whatever reason i got really discouraged about it I just completely just dropped it dude see <laughs> <laughs> well, and and so you write something and you love it but you're like oh god well, nobody else is even gonna what so what's fantastic and was not planned was all three episodes show that there are like uh what's not confident like you, you, there's like insecurity. a doubt but yeah an insecurity yeah like with jay sarge he's like i i'm just gonna hide all these extra songs under my bed because they're not perfect yet right or um these movies that I've right there. And, but then you got and then you got Ming chen who's like just do just do it for content just get it out and you got brian johnson who's like yeah I just write for for what i do so it's like it's weird that we're all three of them are kind of just like yeah, this is this be you and just get it out there. Like well, that, that's, that's the advice, dude. Yeah. Like just do what you want to do, create what you want to create, and don't worry about right? it. Right. And I'm like, ah, oh, I guess. And I feel like everybody always says that, and then I'm like, okay, that's great. I'm gonna do that, and then well, I lose steam halfway through. Well, and like Brian Johnson said, is like, you do it. Like you're giving me this advice of just put something out, and like, right. oh, you. What are, what are you putting out? Yeah, person you giving me advice, it. like I'll like if you told me to do like Ben, just put it out. I'm like, all right, you're right, you get it. I trust your opinion, but like right. fucking nobody, who, right. like I've never written or done anything of any kind of significance. Yeah. Oh, you should just put it out. Well, like maybe you should say that to me. <laughs> yeah, maybe why do you put your stuff out there? If it's, oh. so, if it's so easy, you just right? Do your own thing. No, no, we're like, what's the opposite of a suicide pact? <laughs> <laughs> uh, both Self is- self improvement pact. Yes. <laughs> Uh, we both get discovered make, and make millions. No, but, I, I'll definitely be on the cult following. Yes. I can feel like. Uh, so yeah, uh, yeah. Just uh, like, all three were really, really. They all had like they all had like that indie theme too yeah. with them. Where Brian's just like, yeah, this is just what we do, and then Jay Sarge is like, yeah, this is just what I do. Yeah, and then Ming's like, yeah, I'm, I come from indie, but. I, I support Indy and I, that's why he does all. And Ming Chen, he's he's been in a couple of movies, but he's only he's only famous because he liked a Kevin Smith film and worked with Kevin Smith and he's been on telling Steve Dave and the comic book fan. Like that's so weird. Like you could find six, different very like uh, levels of success, right? Just doing whatever you want from a poker table or your. Well, sometimes your, that's all it takes is just to find yeah. your edge up by. Yeah. <clears throat> like doing something with somebody else who has vision and then he found his own footing and yeah. doing other things. So um I think 37 is I'm 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 so glad that we did it. Like it's a huge milestone yeah. for um I think for our podcast and just real good, honest, like genuine content. Right? And they even worked on me because I was several episodes behind and I skipped all those mofos to get to <laughs> episode 37. <laughs> Well, I was telling everybody, I'm like, just skip. Like, I don't care where you're at. Just skip ahead. You have to listen to 37 because there, there's some fucking gems in there, man. Those are some amazing episodes. Literally, it was so great. And it was so nice of them all to come on the yes. podcast. And they were all very insightful and interesting, which is hard to do on demand, I'm sure. But um, it was it was great to see Liam. Like, Liam stepped up hard on. Liam was fantastic. Like, I Honestly, like, he's great at getting along with almost anybody. Yeah. He gets that from his dad. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God he didn't get the right. panic attacks free. <laughs> right. Uh, thing from his dad. Oh, good Lord. But yeah, that Brian Johnson one, man, he was, he was like, get on my, he's like, push me out of the way. He's like, I got something to say. Yeah. And I'm like, all right, do it because I clearly am just losing my mind here. Yeah, I'm just going to talk about her. And... He remembered Sage's birthday and like, I didn't even get that much. Like, yeah, he had plenty of he had plenty of interest. He also has like the knowledge because obviously he's also kind of like a testy nerd, and I think he was really excited. And I'm glad he didn't like break under the pressure or anything like that because he's also 13, right? <laughs> so, um, now that we are 
uh, coming out of 37. Um, I wanted to make sure that we talked about 37 on this episode so I can like retag the last right, right, right. <laughs> three episodes. Like, so everybody go back and listen to 37 again. Uh, make sure you hit the likes. Uh, leave comments because uh, we'd love to see the comments on what your guys' opinions were of me, Liam, and or the guests. Yeah, I think now the comments are just uh, Kelly and me. <laughs> um, Andy puts in uh, some no, actually, everyone's... Actually, Sarge was in the comments of his own video, wasn't he? No. The, the dude's great. He, he was in there. I um, swear to God, he was dude, in there. Dude, the Whimsy Live intro? Mm-hmm. It's like it's like the has like the most views of everything on my on my YouTube right now. Yeah, at like three fifty or something. Like it's crazy. Like people are loving that that uh, that song. So huge shout out to Jay Orange. No, yeah, it was a great song. It's it it's a great fine. song. I love it. The live and the classic it version. Is. I gotta yeah, use it for motivation from now on. Every time I have to get up from bed in the morning. Right. Well, because I was telling him, I'm like, oh, I asked him. He's like, well, we don't really need one, and I'm like. We don't really need one, man. But if he wants to make us one, it seems like, oh yeah, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Obviously. Obviously, if Jay Sarge wants to, then right. yeah, sure. Yeah, it's like one of those things where I don't have to have a, a, a I don't have to have the nice skins. <laughs> okay, I'll take them. <laughs> okay. I would say no. Uh, yeah, so I'm kind of now I'm plotting and scheming on trying to figure out what the next milestone is. Conceptually, year one, so July. So I gotta kind of map out what number that will be. You get summer camp stuff coming up yeah right so that would be fun that's a good milestone um uh, because that will lead right up to year one so we can kind of like like i just i'm look i look at like if we write down all the things that we've accomplished so far it's wild it is crazy it is wild like chris love chris but he like he doesn't have a website yet he, he he's taking his time on on the uh, YouTube and and creating everything else. I'm like, just create content, man. Come I'm on, like, Chris. Just, I'm like, just create. Oh, yeah. like, no, Chris is great though. He is. He's been on all the live streams and stuff like that. He's a good friend, Ben. He is a good friend. <laughs> but I'm like, you need more content. And he's like, I'm like, oh, and it was funny because I'm one of the live streams. I'm like, that's why he's taking his time because he doesn't want wrinkles <laughs> 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 in his content in the kitchen. I'm like, I'm like, oh, he's a business, right? So he has to kind of like. Show that he actually knows what he's doing. He's not just winging it and just <laughs> almost like he has to know what he's doing in order for people to hire him. Oh, oh, oh there's oh, there's a system you, to his madness. Can you imagine wanting to make money right. and live. So, um, but yeah, there's so much stuff. Like year one's gonna be fun. Um, but my, maybe we'll do like, let's see, year one, do like a best of clip episode, and then do an episode like another open house and just bring mm, a bunch yeah. of people over again. Um, but, but yeah, we just look at everything that we've already done so far. We got a Robert Kurtzman. Yeah, we did. That was like one of our first big celebrity I, interviews. So I was like, that's, that's crazy. So now I'm like, all right, who can we get for year one? I'm like, can you try, and I'll email for Walt Flanagan, see if we can get a Walt on and be like, Hey man, don't listen to Brian. I wasn't that bad. <laughs> I promise if you have COVID. Oh. Good Lord. I'll have mercy on you. Right. Um, yeah, I've been reaching out to like. I guess a couple of like pseudo celebrities, like within their fields. Like yesterday on the live stream, I mentioned like I reached out to some a couple of kids from uh, that play Tetris. Yeah. Like world, like world, like record holders for Tetris. Mm -hmm. I'm emailing those guys. Well, um, I, I think what I've learned kind of from watching your podcast is like the worst thing anyone could say is no. Because you guys have asked for like a lot of interviews from people, and I'm right. like, oh God, what if, what if they say no? And I'm like, wait. So what do they say no? Like, what well, does it say yes? Oh, well, it goes back to like your favorite quote from Liam episode one is like, yeah. he's like, just like, I don't think the story's over. Like, he's like, yeah, yeah. he's like, he, he <coughs> said right away that he's like, you got to continue in order to continue. Right. He's like, yeah, he's you can't like, just go like, oh yeah, we had this cool interaction and right. that it's was it. That was, that was our story. We're going to tell at uh, parties for. Right. So 37, ago. it's like, we're not done. It's. What's the rest? Of, what What is the the next chapter of whimsy? And it's going to be like, I don't know what it is yet, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be interesting. We got yeah. live streams now. Like, um, I keep saying it, and maybe tomorrow I'll actually do it. I put the link in. So when I was doing the live streams, I took the link yeah. and I put it into the, the live stream, and I'm going to start like 
hit just type in like tagging celebrities on the live stream maybe like <laughs> um call in please be like hey Ming Chen, if you're up boom here's the link and just like or if somebody wants to troll me and just jump on and I just get some rando like yeah just start reaching out to a couple of random people and just be like hey what are you guys doing <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we almost called into the live stream. Oh, you should have. We were at a restaurant. It would have been like terrible quality. Oh, you should have been like, hey, waitress, talk to him. <laughs> hey, what's your favorite sitcom from the 80s, Miss uh, Waitress? Oh, you're only 18. Oh. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I'm super happy with 37. It was it was a good time. It, it came out better than I like whatever I envisioned for 37 because like I was doing so much stuff with 37 and everything else and like I knew I wanted the three episodes I talked to Liam and to be like let's make it a three-parter right and it, it kept evolving into be like instead of three weekly episodes I'm like well just go crazy and you guys gotta listen to three episodes for a week and you I, guys I, did I, I was saying I did instantly like you guys like everybody stepped up like um I'm not seeing a huge spike in the subscribers, but all the socials are are, are seeing uh, improvements in followers and then just the overall views and listens yeah. are like hugely up versus like a normal week. Like I said, yeah, as soon as it starts getting pushed on my, because previous episodes didn't get pushed as hard as 37 on my feed we were pushing hard because like <laughs> even um uh jay sarge i think yeah. you guys posted at like 6 a.m or something 1 a.m 1 a.m it didn't get pushed to me till later that afternoon so kelly's like hey what'd you think of jay sarge i'm like what do you mean what did i think it's not up yet right and then like at 2 p.m it was like yeah i'm gonna see jay sarge uh so that i listened to it while i was working but yeah it's, but it's, then the next two episodes like in the middle of the night they pushed to my feed and i was i woke up and i was like hey yeah it, it was fantastic like i don't think i could have asked for a better 37 or a better three guests for 37 yeah perfect literally perfect yeah. and they all brought something different yes and something that one we can all relate to um all everybody pretty relatable mean channel obviously a little bit more on the energetic side but i need i needed that up i needed that contrast yeah. in the middle uh jay sarge kind of this God. And I like I love Ming Chen because he he has that energy yeah. that makes you want to smile with him right. and to listen to him, right. you know? Oh, so good. So I don't know. I don't know what's next. I'll keep everybody updated, but I'm gonna figure it out. Um still working on the, the Wednesday live stuff and trying to structure it a little bit better. It's getting there. Um yeah, man, I just like making my mom laugh. <laughs> oh, it's so much fun. She's such a nice lady. She is. Um, I know we have a big Mother's Day episode coming up. So uh, Kelly gave the obvious, like, how are we doing it? And I was like, oh, let's do it this way. She's like, well, that's pretty dumb. She's like, why don't you guys do it this way? And I'm like, oh, oh, <laughs> duh. That. that is the way better way. Um, so that's coming up in May. And yeah, so. And Kelly will be be premiering on the podcast finally i know maybe we'll get her on here just be like just before just so she can kind of get her nerves uh i think that's all i got you got anything else for uh, your 37 wrap up no nope. you want to hit the ending whimsy <laughs>